The MLA Carbon Calculator estimates emissions produced from beef, sheep and grain production. It also enables a simplified calculation of the carbon stored in trees. It does not calculate soil carbon sequestration. You can use the full carbon accounting model, full cam, to model soil carbon if you have an agronomic analysis on hand. To log in using your My MLA account. If you don't have a My MLA account, that's okay. It's free and fast to set up. To make this process easier, download the data checklist before you start. This can be found in the resource tab along with a tips and tools guide. After logging in, click the Start a New Carbon Calculation button in the top right corner. You can start from a blank calculation, upload a pre-filled Excel version, or use an example data set. To begin a blank data set, add a property name and year, and input relevant property information and your PIC. Check the applicable boxes for your operation and select states or territories for each. Lastly, check the box in each section if your property gets enough rainfall or irrigation to drain through the soil profile. This is typically above 600 millimetres per year. Once complete, hit the Save button at the bottom of the screen. Let's start to enter livestock numbers. Select the Edit Beef or Sheep button. This will open the Livestock Inventory section. You can select to enter your data monthly or seasonally. Choose a livestock class and input the head count, average live weight and live weight gain. Separate sections are provided for sale and purchased animals since emissions are only counted while on your property. As the year progresses, animals may move from one category to another. For example, animals that are less than one year old in winter may be one to two years old in spring. For each season, input the average live weight for each livestock category. The average weight is calculated by comparing weights throughout the season from start to end. For beef systems, to calculate the average weight for calves, multiply their growth rate by the number of days left in the season after they were born and add this to their birth weight. For instance, if steer calves with an average birth weight of 35 kilograms and a growth rate of one kilogram per head per day are born in the middle of spring with about 46 days left in the season. Their average weight by the end of spring would be 81 kilograms. For sheep systems, to calculate the average weight for animals that are maintaining weight, example, ewes or rams, this is easy, as live weight won't change much. For lambs, the average weight for the season can be calculated by multiplying their growth rate by the number of days left in the season after they were born and adding this number to the birth weight. For example, lambs with an average birth weight of five kilograms and a growth rate of 250 grams per head per day, born in the middle of spring with about 46 days to go in the season, their average weight would be 16.5 kilograms by the end of spring. For each season, input the average daily live weight gain for each class. This should match the live weights entered. The difference in weights between two seasons should equal the sum of the daily weight gains. If the live weight across two seasons is known, the live weight gain can be calculated. Use 91.25 for the average number of days per season. The weather lambs in the example here have an average autumn live weight of 52 kilograms minus an average summer live weight of 42 kilograms divided by 91.25, giving a LWG through sum of 110 grams per head per day. Next is reproduction, which involves inputting the percentage of cows calving or the percentage of ewes lambing. Use pregnancy test data, specifically PTIC data for beef systems as your input. If, for instance, 98% of your females are pregnant and calving occurs across two seasons, ensure that the numbers add up to the total PTIC. For sheep systems, ensure the total percentage matches the annual lambing rate, especially when lambing occurs over more than one season. For instance, 
if you have a lambing rate of 145% and lambing occurs both in spring and winter, allocate 72.5% to each season. If all your lambing is in spring, enter 145% for that season. Next is the purchase inventory. In this section, you'll need to enter the total number of head purchased in each class over the 12 month period and the live weight purchased weight. Next is sale inventory. In this section, you'll need to enter the total number of animals sold in each class over the 12 month period and the average sale weight, live weight per head. For sheep systems, the final step is wool data. This requires entering the total number of animals and their average wool production in kilograms per head for each class over the past 12 months. Savannah burning is only relevant for northern beef producers. Savannah burning can emit methane and nitrous oxide. Savannah burning is the very last section for data entry at the bottom of the beef input section. Select the options relevant to your enterprise under this section. Vegetation class, rainfall, fire season, fuel, patchiness, years since last fire and the fire scar area in hectares. Then select return to data summary. Inputting cropping data. For mixed enterprise systems, you can enter data under the crop plantation section to add your cropping emissions. To start, select the edit crop plantations button, then select add crop data. Start off by selecting the name of the grain produced from the drop-down menu. Then select the production type. Then enter the average grain yield in tonnes per hectare and the area sown in hectares. Next, enter the product application for the cropping system for MAP, SOA, DAP, urea or single superphosphate. Enter the figures as kilograms of product per hectare for this specific grain. If you used no MAP, you will need to enter zero in the box to be able to save and move to the next entry. All boxes must have a figure even if the figure is zero. Select the return to data summary when done. Inputting energy data. The next section is energy. This includes electricity use, petrol and diesel consumption. You may need to allocate your energy inputs as a percentage of your entire farm input. For example, if 10% of your fuel in a mixed beef and cropping farm business is used in the beef system, then only 10% of the total annual fuel usage is entered into the calculator. To enter electricity data, select the Edit button for the electricity section and enter the annual electricity use in kilowatt hours. If you deliberately buy all your power from renewable sources or green power, select Renewable. Although the emissions generated by electricity used on farm are not emitted directly by the farm, it's essential to include this information to understand the greenhouse gas impact of power usage. If you purchase electricity from the grid and generate some on farm, enter the amount purchased minus any fed back into the grid. Enter annual petrol and diesel consumption in litres for the enterprise, including on-road and on-farm use. Allocate consumption from each commodity using the sliders. Return to data summary when done. By adding your plantation data into the calculator, you can create an estimation of carbon sequestration. Go to the Edit Vegetation section of the calculator to enter data for vegetation sequestration calculations. This section of the calculator is not intended for existing remnant vegetation, but for tree plantings, shelter belts or plantations. To input data, select the drop-down options for each section. You can combine physically separate areas of vegetation with the same characteristics. If the tree species on your property is not listed, select the closest representation or choose Mixed Species – Environmental Plantings. Enter the soil type and area in hectares for each vegetation type and combine areas of similar age and type. Then enter the age of trees in years and allocate the proportion of trees to beef or sheep enterprise totalling 100%. Inputting 
off-farm inputs data. The off-farm usage section is to account for all inputs for the beef, sheep and cropping systems that have been purchased off-farm, such as livestock feed and fertiliser for the beef and sheep systems. You may need to allocate your inputs as a percentage of your entire farm input. For example, if 25% of your nitrogen fertiliser for a mixed beef and cropping farm business is used on pastures, then only 25% of the total nitrogen fertiliser is entered in the calculator. To start entering data, select the Edit button. To input off-farm grain usage, enter the amount of grain purchased for livestock feed in tonnes. Then allocate the percentage for beef or sheep systems. Do the same for other feed inputs, like cottonseed or hay. For glyphosate inputs, allocate the total used to each commodity as a percentage for mixed enterprise producers. Repeat this process for herbicides and pesticides. Enter the total limestone in tons for livestock production areas. The limestone's purity affects its effectiveness and you can find out the fraction from your supplier. Less pure limestone needs higher rates for the same result, meaning more emissions. Next, enter the total single superphosphate, SSP, in tons for livestock production areas. Convert other blends to SSP equivalent by working out total tons of phosphorus and dividing by 0.09 percent P in SSP. For example, 10 tonnes of 10% P blend equals approximately 11 tonnes of SSP. Enter the total urea fertiliser in tonnes used for beef and sheep systems for pasture or fodder crops. Separate dry land and irrigated pasture systems. Enter other nitrogen fertiliser as tonnes of nitrogen calculated based on tonnes and percentage of nitrogen in the fertiliser. Example. 10 tonnes of 23% nitrogen equals 2.3 tonnes of nitrogen. Now let's look at your results. There are three separate summary tables for the results. View your results breakdown per scope in the results table. Scope 1 emissions are the emissions produced directly from your operation that you have control over. Scope 2 emissions are the greenhouse gas emissions produced from your electricity usage you can reduce the amount of Scope 2 emissions produced from your enterprise by improving efficiency of electricity use or making choices around power supply. Scope 3 emissions are the greenhouse gas emissions produced from your purchased inputs. You can influence Scope 3 emissions by your purchasing choices, choosing suppliers who are low emitters themselves or using inputs efficiently. The net enterprise emissions are calculated by summing the total scope 1, 2 and 3 emissions and the carbon sequestration. A negative number means the business is sequestering more than it emits. A positive number means it is emitting more than it sequesters. Emissions intensity allows benchmarking between the commodities you produce as it breaks down emissions into kilogram of product. This gives an indication of the amount of product produced for each kilogram CO2E produced, which allows you to understand each product's carbon use efficiency. Now that you have the carbon account for your business, you can look for opportunities to reduce your emissions or increase on-farm sequestration. To find out more about how livestock businesses can reduce emissions or increase sequestrations, utilise the management strategy or visit the MLA website to find more tools and resources.